Projection mapping for film is our subject tonight. And I thought what we'd do at Argon TV today is to move away from our normal theme of laser-based material. Because my guest tonight is a lady who is very talented and I was super impressed with what I saw. And I thought, I just have to share this with the community because it's too beautiful not to share it. So I'm very happy to welcome, I hear she's a singer, she's a songwriter, and she's the owner and director of a company called All Around Artsy. Please welcome to Argon TV, it gives me great pleasure, Kira Bursky. Welcome to Argon TV. Hello. <laughs> Hi, how are you? And it's, it's really great to have you here because um, we're part of the same group in Facebook. And I was uh, scrolling through it. It's a, a group about projection mapping. I was scrolling through it and I came across a little piece that you'd posted and I was just really intrigued by it. It was three animated heads talking together or just moving around together. And it just caught my eye. And even though it was a very short clip, I felt like these three characters had a story behind them. So that was initially how uh, I came across you. And as I started to research through your own profile, I was just really impressed with some of the work you were doing. Um, so here we are um, talking about you and your talent. Maybe you could just share with us you know, a little bit about who you are without, you know, we don't need to go back to the day you were born, but uh, who yeah. you are and <laughs> your company all around Artsy. Maybe you can just tell us a little bit about that as well. Yeah. Well, hello. Uh, I am Kira. I am based in Asheville, North Carolina, which is in the United States. Uh, I own and run a media production company called All Around Artsy, and we specialize in creative video production. Uh, so we do a lot of short films, a lot of music videos, um, sometimes documentary work, but basically everything my company creates has some sort of magical fantasy essence to it. So even if it's reality, I, I love to capture the magic of the reality. Um, yeah, so that's a bit about my company. Um, this past year, I took part in an artist residency and I created my my first uh, art installation and it was projection based. Um, and so this past year is really when I became projector obsessed. And now I'm the proud owner of nine projectors and I, I love them. <laughs> well, that's cool. And, and how old is the company? All around artsy. So at this point I am 24 and I started going by that, that company name when I was 13. So I've been growing it for a lot of my life, um, but it got serious, I would say four or five years ago. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I, I wish I'd started my, that, my particular business when I was 13. I was, I was doing something very different when I was 12. I was, I was delivering newspapers and things like that. And I didn't that's actually cool. get in. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm very entrepreneurial mindset, but I didn't get into show production and, at all until about 1989, which I was about 28 when I found my home in, in shows. So um, it's great that you had that start early on. And then there was a, there was a piece, who's, um, what kind of clients do you have? Is, is the work that you do for you or is it for clients? Um, it's a mix. Uh, my clients, I have so many different types of clients. It's, I love that. Uh, one of my passions is just learning about lots of different perspectives and different worlds. I, I love everything. So I, I love working with different kinds of clients. I mean, this past year, I had one week where I was working with um, realtors at a real estate conference. I was working with a shamanic energy healer. I was working with um, a musician. And so I was working with all of these different, very different types of people and doing video production work for all of them, uh, which is really fulfilling for my soul. You just have to keep on choo, poo, poo changing your worldview within days and getting into their perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. And there was one piece of work that I saw of yours today, which I thought was really like, wow. And that was the lessons from my nightmares. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That was super cool. That, that looks like it took a bit of time to put together. Yeah. So that one, I, um, let's see. So there is this awesome company called runway. And they are a company that has created a soft, a machine learning software 
that has made the machine learning process more accessible to people, to creatives. And so I applied for their virtual residency and I got, I, I was accepted. And so that was my final project. So I, um, in the course of about a month, I learned about machine learning and how to create uh, unique visuals with machine learning. And so the whole entire film was, was generated through machine learning and different machine lear learning um, models. Uh, so yeah, that, that was a really uh, an interesting project. <laughs> I'm sure. I actually have no idea what you're talking about. So, uh, oh, <laughs> do so you know what machine learning is? I have no idea. No. <laughs> so my since I uh, my version of it is going to be a lot less technical than other people will explain it. But the dumbed down version is basically you can train. It's almost like training a robot. You know, you're training the machine to understand something. So full. There's a visual in the film of my face morphing and just like changing into different versions of myself. And so to create that, I gathered 150 pictures of myself and I, I trained the machine to recognize patterns in my face. And so then it was able to generate an animation and generate its own versions of me. And so by the end of it, I have all of these pictures of me that are not actually pictures of me that the machine created. So machine learning, uh, the machine is gathering information from your data set and then it's able to recreate its own versions of reality so you're training it to um, understand and yeah it's pretty crazy that, that's super cool it sounds a little bit like artificial intelligence gone wrong um, <laughs> <laughs> i'm kind of old school you know I'm, I'm 56 right now so i i'm i go back a long way with technology and this new kind of technology is is truly amazing and i think you know we could probably do another interview just about that in itself but uh, that's super cool i've never heard of it uh <laughs> the final result is absolutely stunning and and hopefully i Thank can you. i can put a link of that in the in the video so that people can see it i'll, I'll talk i'll get that from you later yeah um, but i was really impressed with it and and that was another one of the pieces of work and then i also saw that you'd got a video it got five million hits or something on youtube oh yeah so i um i have a few films that pass the million mark one of my films is past 10 million. Then the one, okay, so this is sad. YouTube decided to take down my 5 million viewed film. And it's been on YouTube for like five years and they, they updated their policies. And so then just this past week, I got a notification saying that they've decided that it doesn't, you know, fit their guidelines. And that was, I had to, it was a grieving process, you know, it was pretty sad. It's like my 5 million views, but I still have the one that has 10 million views. So it's okay. <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> yeah. At the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, YouTube is going through some real challenges for lots of different people right now. And, you know, un unfortunately you're not the only one that it's happening to. Yeah. Um, I actually use another platform as well, just in case. Uh, for all my videos, I share it on other platforms as well, but ouch, five million, yeah. that's, uh, that's an ouch me, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, well, it's, it's great to hear that you're having all this success, um, obviously not with YouTube, but um, <laughs> you know, fa fantastic success for someone who's 24 years old, that's amazing. So we're going to be talking a bit more about uh, projection mapping specifically for film and mm -hmm. you're using a platform called is it light wave light form light form sorry light form yes and in a moment uh, i think you're going to take us on a little bit of a journey and a tutorial with that so you, we can see what you're doing um so we'll just take a quick break and we'll be back in a moment i'm talking to kira bursky about projection mapping for film we'll be back in two minutes And welcome back to Argon TV. I am having a great conversation here with Kira, and we are talking specifically about projection mapping for film. And in a moment, Kira is actually going to take us through some of her work and how she achieves it all. But before we do that, I thought I would just ask for those people who don't know what it is, what is projection mapping? Yeah, so with a normal projection setup, you know, you would 
have your projector and they would just project like a rectangular image onto a flat wall. That's like the normal idea of projection. But with projection mapping, you are fine tuning the visuals so that it interacts with your 3D reality. So a more specific example, let's say you were in a room with a car. So then you could set up the projector and have the visuals so that they specifically interact with the car so that there are certain colors that are only on the wheels that are only on the only on the, the windows um, so you're basically uh it's with my setup it's kind of like photoshop but for light in your reality so that's my explanation of projection mapping <laughs> And very good it is too. I understand that. <laughs> and then you're saying you have six projectors and, and can you literally map all six projectors together so that it's like one big image? Yeah, so I actually have nine projectors. <laughs> oh, nine, okay. <laughs> and uh, so with my light form setup, that's one particular setup. Um, the rest of them, so this past year I created a projection installation. And so for the main show, I had... Um, I had five projectors all synced together. So hypothetically, I can sync them all. Um, yeah. And the most I've synced up for like one show is, is five at a time. So the, the projection mapping software that you're using is Lightform? Yes. And Lightform is, it, it kind of assigns the images to the specific projectors and the specific places. So Lightform, in this case, I would be using for one projector. So I, um, for my installation, I did that before I had Lightform. So I did projection mapping. Um, I, you know, created my visuals in After Effects um, and assembled everything in Adobe Premiere and had to do everything manually. Um, whereas with Lightform, I have uh, my setup on one particular projector. So that's uh, some, I got my light form set up, I think about half a year ago, yeah. And what kind of projectors do you use? Um, the majority of my projectors are Optima. When I created my installation, I wanted to stick with a brand. So I have a lot of Optima, but then I also have, um, <laughs> wait, no, Opt yes, I have Optima, and then my light form setup is on an Epson projector, and then I have uh, this tiny projector called a Miroyer. I think that's how you say it, which I, I purchased at Best Buy for a short film many years ago. And the plan was to return it. But then I fell in love with it because it's like this big and it's so cute. Um, yeah. So I have a mix. <laughs> that's cool. And is this something that, you know, anyone can just go and get the projectors or is it a professional level setup? Uh, I mean, I have a lot of projectors, so I don't think anyone would want to drop that much money <laughs> on all the projectors that I have. Plus, I have uh, a lot of random pieces of tech to be able to sync everything up. Like, I have these media players that I would hook up, and I had to figure out. Anyways, uh, I would say it's a little more on the professional end. I don't think you would want to have to figure it all out on your own. <laughs> I was going to say nine projectors sounds pretty expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a bit of an investment, but it was worth it. Great. And, and that's cool. So why, why don't you take us on a little journey through your computer and show us some of the things that you're doing? Yeah. So I think a good way to start is showing a promo video for the installation I created, because it'll just give you an idea of, um, yeah, my beginnings in the world of projection. Yeah. So I'm going to play that. Ten. Like you have a lot going on there. 
there were projections, multiple projections around the room. And I also saw projections onto TV screens as well. Is, is that all coming from you? Yeah. So for the installation, I had a main 30 minute show that was synced up to the five projectors and the five projectors, two of them were on the ceiling and then three of the walls were covered in the show. And so while that was happening there, uh, so this was in my apartment at the time. So the two bedrooms also had projectors on the ceilings and those were the, um, like the portal gazing rooms. So guests could walk into the bedrooms and just like lay on the uh, bed and look into galaxies in one room. And the other room was the collective consciousness gazing room where I, I created a face collage where I had friends and strangers. They sent me video clips of their face. And so it was like this collective consciousness video collage that's coming towards you while you're laying in bed. And then also there's this section where these souls are swimming through the stars. Anyway, so that was happening. And then there was also uh, a projector, an interactive projector that was hooked up to an iPad. And so the iPad, uh, the camera feed was streaming onto the wall. And then that we had an application pulled up where you could play around with different effects. So then the guests could also be kind of manipulating part of the installation. And then that was also linked into a TV. So it was streaming onto the wall and then also to the TV just to make it a little more immersive. And then there was also a miniature diorama of the room that I created. And then I did, um, it's kind of like a projection technique where you get a piece of glass at a 45 degree angle and then you put a monitor above it and so then the screen, the light from the screen reflects onto the piece of glass. And so you have something like floating within your diorama. So I had that going on. So uh, Pepper's ghost. What was that? Pepper's ghost style projection. Oh, I haven't seen that. Ah, okay. You might want to research that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I should make a note about that. You said salt, pepper's ghost. Yeah, salt, pepper. Pepper's ghost. Yeah. Pepper's, pepper's ghost. I'll check that out. There's a similar kind of uh, technique, but it's an old Cool. Yeah. yeah. Yes, this it is, it looks like this is exactly. Image. Yeah. Yep. I think this is the exact technique. Yeah. So those were the main elements. And how long did it take you to put something like that together? It's a 30 minute show. Yeah. How much work? Yeah. Um, I th I'm pretty sure I spent about three months to the launch just a, a lot of it was thinking about what i was going to do and just like wrapping my head around it and i had a completely different initial idea and the initial idea i had all these very specific parts of the installation that um i it, for a first installation it was too much to pull off there's like a lot of programming so i not only did i want to create my first projection installation but i was imagining things that would take intensive programming and interactivity so anyway, so I had all that and went through that and um, then I pivoted the idea and I think I had about one month of very intense creation, getting the visuals together, making sure all the equipment was working. And uh, the thing that made the whole process even crazier, so this was all part of a residency. So my apartment was a part of the residency. Um, and before I moved in, the space was specifically a vacation rental. So part of my task was to figure out how to create this installation so that overnight guests would be able to turn it on by themselves, which is like that, that's like way harder because, <laughs> you know, uh, with all the installation had eight projectors, the main showed five with all of these media players. And anyway, so one of my tasks was to also figure out how can I streamline as much of it as possible so that a guest can come in. I can have very easy instructions and with the click of a button, they can turn it on. And I figured it out. I was able to um, set it up so that literally with this remote one click, then the main show turns on. So that was, that was a lot for me to figure out. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty amazing. And, and I guess you've got to find a balance between this is what I want to do. And this is what the audience want to see. Yeah. And somehow you've got to merge the two together. Um, and that's, you know, I think in the world of creativity, that's always been a problem for a lot of us. You know, we have these 
these big ideas and small budgets. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and merging the two between, you know, what a creator wants and what a client wants can be mm. very challenging sometimes. But that that's very cool. Um, indeed, I, I like that project. A lot of, and is it is it just you, or do you have a team of people working with you, and you collaborate together and come up with ideas? Yeah. So I I was the the only person in terms of the like creating the actual visuals of the show and putting it all together and coming up with the story. Um, but my partner was the technical director. So he helped to actually get on the ladder and, you know, drill things in the, to the ceiling. Um, so my partner, and then also I had another friend who helped with the actual build. So the three of us uh, put the whole thing up, um, which I'm very grateful for because yeah, the ceilings in that space are very high. <laughs> Yeah, and that that's pretty uh, pretty cool project for three people though. I'm I'm impressed with that. That's that's Thanks. neat. And you're you're when you go to sleep and dream, it must be kind of weird in there. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sleeping in that space was pretty cool. Yeah, great. Um, so anything else you're going to show us now? Or is, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I can definitely. Let me share the screen again. Once upon a time, there was a girl who felt trapped. Whatever she would think, she would manifest. Shadows taunted her. She could not escape the darkness. One day, something strange occurred. She thought to herself, you're living in a piece of paper. The girl had never thought this thought before. The girl didn't know she was living in confinement. At first, she didn't know how to handle this information. She was frightened and then upset. But eventually, she grew fatigued and could not think anymore. So she just sat and her mind emptied, and her eyes shut, and all fell dark and silent. She opened her eyes. Everything felt more real and alive than ever before. She experienced the most profound feeling of love in her entire life. It filled her up fully. The experience faded, and she returned to her body. I can't get it out of my head, she thought. This new feeling. It's not a minute. <laughs> okay, and, and I'm intrigued. I want to know what happens next. So if you want to know what happens next, I'll embed the video beneath this, 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 this video. You have to go and watch it. Um, but what a crazy world that would be if everything I thought manifested. Yes. I don't know if that would be a good place. <laughs> 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 and I noticed in your first video that you showed, the first clip, that it said you're an award-winning artist. Tell yes. us about the awards. Yeah. Um, hmm. Well, I've won a, 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 quite a few awards at different festivals. Um, let's see. Uh, I guess this past year, my film period won at a film festival in Berlin called the Berlin library film festival um and i don't know just a lot of different awards for different short films music videos um yeah my work has played all over the all over the world and uh, i'm really grateful for that yeah that's nice it's really nice to be recognized when you get something like that it's really good and, and especially you know you're 24 years old you're doing pretty well eh? thank you the the world could do with a few more people like you i think um because there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, negativity in the world right now. Yeah. And a lot of problems and a lot of issues. And I think if we all just focused on what's special about us rather than what's not good about us, how, yeah. how different it would be. Um, and, you know, it looks like you have some stories to tell. In, Definitely. In your material. So where does the inspiration come from? Yeah, I... Uh... I feel like I'm at a place in life that the inspiration for stories 
is very easy. It just is, it's this constant flow. I guess, uh, I feel like inspiration is almost like a, a point of view you can have in life. Like you can choose to allow yourself to be inspired by life or you can close yourself away from it. And so I feel like maybe in my life, I've been on this journey to opening myself up more and more and getting to this place where now every single day, I just, I feel, I, I see, I feel, I sense stories and everything. Like I can see with my own self that every day, it's just my own emotional arc. You know, like you wake up and you feel a certain way and you can just think about that one thing and stories emerge from that. Like where, how is this feeling going to transform? Am I gonna transform this, this emotion? Or am I going to let the day take me on an adventure or, you know, so you can just start to question things and really think about it. And just in life, you're constantly crafting your own story or letting, or letting your life kind of craft the story for you. Um, so in terms of inspiration, uh, a lot of stories come from my own emotional journeys. And uh, I think I use, the artistic process is a way to really uh, deeply reflect on where I'm at and then also reflect on where I want to go. And so sometimes through my own storytelling, I have more clarity in terms of my own life direction because I've, I focused that attention. And uh, yeah, so I think the process can be very cathartic and also healing. Um, and I'm also reminded that if I push myself to be truthful and vulnerable and authentic with my work that I'm, I'm putting that energy out into the world and then maybe other people some people will connect to it and some people will feel safer in their own truths some people will feel more comfortable opening up about what they're going through and so that's a constant thing in the back of my head is just pushing myself just be as truthful and honest about my experiences so that I can continue to help other people and help possibly help other people and possibly help the world to open up, feel more uh, free, feel more love, more warmth, you know, so. How beautiful because, you know, the world right now seems to have gone a little bit crazy in some places, but there's still a lot of beauty in the world. There's still yeah. a lot of good things happening right now. And um, I think I, you know, it, it seems like we've, we've had a big death in humanity of freedom and, and different things. But at the same time, we've had a birth of something new. Yeah. And, you know, since March 15th, I've pretty much been in my house. I've hardly been, I mean, for two months, I didn't even go outside my front door. And you have to go to a space where you, as you say, you look at something and you just create something with it because the other choice is not a good choice. The other choice is unhappiness. Mm -hmm. So I, even though I can't go outside and my definition of success is freedom. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like I've had that taken away from me, but I've had to create a new freedom, mm -hmm. a new freedom of creativity. And, you know, I made a comment the other day on Facebook. Someone said, how can you be so happy with all this shit going on? And I said, it's not my shit. <laughs> yeah. And I just absolutely refused to be part of the dark side. You want to call it the dark side, the bad side. And I just want to keep creating good stuff and inspiring yeah. people because that's why I went into show production. I'm predominantly in lasers. I've been in lasers since uh, 1998. The first time I saw a laser, it blew my mind. I just went, wow. Yeah. And I wanted to share that feeling. Uh, and I've, I've been doing it for 30 years, Nelly. So yeah, uh, I hear where you're coming from and what a, a beautiful way to, to kind of share your message and your stories and inspire other people. So good on you. Thank you. Uh, so I'm, I'm here right now talking to Kira about uh, projection mapping, predominantly for film, um, but obviously you can use it in so many different ways. You could, you know, for weddings, for games, for entertainment, for all different things. Um, and Kira's been sharing with us some of her amazing work. And if you want to find out how to get in touch with Kira and how you can see more of her work, stay right here. We'll be back in just a moment. So 
Hello, welcome back to Argon TV. I'm here talking to Kira, an amazing mapping artist, a projection mapping artist, predominantly in film. And uh, we've been looking at some of her work and, and getting inside her mind a little bit to see what inspires her and, and why she does what she does at 24 years old. So if people want to see more of your work and they want to get in touch with you to talk about working with you, how do they do that? Yeah, so my website is www.allaroundartsy.com. My production company is called All Around Artsy. So basically, if you look up All Around Artsy, you'll find me. Um, so if you go on to Facebook, All Around Artsy. If you go on to Instagram, All Around Artsy. If you go on to YouTube, you actually put my name in. It's Kira Bursky Films. <laughs> I want to update that in the future. But for now, Kira Bursky Films on YouTube. Um, and if you want to reach out directly, just go to my website or uh, you can email me at kira at allaroundartsy.com. So, yeah. That's great. And I'll put links in the description beneath this video to all of those. So all you have to do, I'll make it easy for you. Scroll down, click on the links, and then you'll be able to get in touch with Kira. So Kira, it's been actually fantastic having you here today, just taking a look at some of your work. And I'm, I'm very privileged, I think, to be connected with you because you have such a talent. And I love to surround myself with talent like this. So great job. Keep it up. Thank you. Before we go, the, my final question that I like to ask to everyone that I talk to is, what is Kira's secret to success? So I would say my secret to success is i've discovered that at least for me personally it's really easy it's really easy to get swept up in i don't know just uh thinking about what other people are going to think thinking about success and just getting caught up in that outs and thinking about outside perspective and i found that to be very restrictive and that that actually that prevents me from tapping into my innermost authentic creative expression. And so I feel that uh, through time, I've been realizing that more and more. And finally, recently, more consistently, I've discovered that like this breakthrough moment was just to like in every step of the, in every step of the creative process in every step of, the way, uh, whatever project you're doing, to realign yourself to your core, to why you're doing what you're doing, and to to really just stop and take a moment to remind yourself, why am I doing this? Why am I an artist? Why am I doing this project? And when I do that, sometimes it's like almost almost like a wake up call because then I remember I'm doing this because I love I love creating. It's, it's a beautiful feeling. I want to share that beautiful feeling. I want to spread magic and I want to just be in the flow of that magic. And as corny as that might sound, that's why I'm creating personally. And whenever I remind myself of that, then the whole process changes. And then everything I'm doing is I'm experimenting. I'm discovering new ways of showing what I'm feeling and I'm, I'm connecting to others on a deeper level. It's like everything falls into place perfectly because I'm in alignment with myself. So I would say that my, my current secret to success, the thing that I'm reflecting on right now is just is stop what you're doing, pause and really check in with yourself. Why are you a creator? Why are you doing what you're doing? Feel it fully and then proceed because chances are what you're going to create after you've checked in with yourself is going to be more truly you and more more of a beautiful process more of a fulfilling process and something that extends beyond yourself in ways that you don't even realize well that's kind of profound um and and very beautiful what a great way to finish uh, our interview today so i hope uh, as a viewer that you enjoyed our video today and especially those last words. Very touching, very moving. Uh, Kira, thank you for being here with us today on Argon TV. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Yes, I did. It was lovely talking to you. Great. And I hope you come back again, visit us another time. Definitely. Great. So we have been having an absolutely awesome discussion with Kira Bursky about projection mapping for films. 
and we'll see you all again in another exciting episode of Argon TV very soon.